Look at this. It's the only time I'll be part of a team. Honestly, Here we I are. feel official. How cool is that? <laughs> the two newest members of the Wilmot Wild. Well, for a couple of minutes anyway, so but we're going to call in away. Wayne Paddock, who is here from the Wilmot Wild. Hey guys. And you know what? It was a couple of weeks ago, you and I, Wayne was on the show, and we said that we'd never played lacrosse, and Wayne said... Oh, yeah, I can make sure that happens. And, you know, we talk so much about the history of the sport, and I told you that, you know, I don't know a lot about it, but a lot of people want to learn. You invited us out here. Right. I called you guys, and you guys showed. So thanks for coming and uh, being a part of what we do out in Wilmot. So. Well, I've got to find out what it is that you do, Wayne, because I've never played lacrosse before. This is all new to me. Yeah. Well, like we said, it's a lot like hockey, right? Where it's uh, you know it's a team sport. Five people on the ice are on the floor at a time, and a goalie each. So six on six, just like hockey. Rules are very very similar, right? We got high sticks and we got slashes and tripping and all that stuff. It's just rather than the puck on the ice, the puck the ball's in the air. So. I've taken a look at some of the action that's going on behind us here with the actual Wilmot Wild guy. I mean, there are some tough throws and, and, and big throws and big goalies involved. In you got to figure 15, 16, 17 years of practice, these guys are going to be pretty good. You know, so just like hockey players, any time that these guys play any sort of a sport for 10, 12 years, after a while you're going to be pretty good. And it looks pretty fancy, but to them it's just, you know, it's just everyday stuff. Okay, now what's the attraction for the players and also for the spectators that are maybe kind of new to the sport? Mark, I think it's the speed, for one. It's the, the fastest game on two feet. Um, you know, it's very, very quick. Not a lot of stoppages, not a lot of face-offs. So very dynamic play. Um, as well, it's very rough. So we got our, we got our uh, action, our contact. Um, it can be violent at times, but we try to keep that out of the game. But, but definitely very action-packed and, and a lot of hitting, a lot of passing, and very, very quick uh, pace of the game. So. Okay, you had me at contact. I was just going to okay. say, yeah, Susan so, and I know from working together, things can turn violent very quickly. What are the rules and the limitations with, if I'm trying to get the ball off someone, what can I and can't, can't I do? Well, it, it's, it's very, um, we're very liberal with the contact, right? So you're allowed to bump. Um, once you start to use your stick um, to your advantage, then we're going to call you and you're going to be, you know, we're going to stop the play and give the ball to the other team. But if the other player has the ball, we're, we're a lot more lenient that you're allowed to cross check, you're allowed to you know, take a little bit of a whack. But uh, a little more lenient, and, and you know what, that's why the guys wear as much padding as they do. It looks worse than it is, and it sounds worse than it is. So you'll hear whack, whack, slap, yeah. but really these guys, they, they don't feel it. So. Okay, we don't have near the equipment on that they do, but I'm wondering, Wayne, if I give you the mic, if you can kind of walk Mark and I through a little bit about, even I don't even know how to hold the stick. Is, is stick the right terminology? Stick is, yeah, stick is the right term. Okay. So basically you're, you're going to cradle it, right? So you're going to put one hand there. Yeah, just like Mark has it there. Right, so Susan's got the right idea when it's up, when you're catching a pass, it's gonna be up here, so you're gonna turn, there you go. Catching yep, catching up yep. there and throwing up there as well. So it's, it's everything's done up high. That's right, that's right, so. Wow, this is leaving at a fast speed. I mean, this ball is traveling at a high velocity. Oh, yeah. Well, some of the hockey players in hockey at the, the All-Star game, they, they're clocked at over 100 miles an hour or higher. Some of our guys in lacrosse, same thing. You look at some of the, the pro guys uh, at the NLL level, they're shooting well over 100, 100 kilometers an hour, you know, and then I feel bad for the goalies, and I was a goalie, getting hit with one of those, uh, that little, it hurts. All right, so to get the whole thing started off, if, if Mark and I were going to start a game, if we were going to try a little bit of a, is it a face-off? Yeah, face-off, yeah. Okay, so what would we do? Y you hold this, tell us, what are we gonna okay, do? Okay, so you're both gonna crouch down, you're gonna be on one bended knee, okay? So go right down. So, so like this, yes. and then like this, like this, and then what we would do is we would put a ball right in the middle, okay. and then we would blow the whistle, and you guys would pull, and you guys would basically fight for the ball. And then we're fighting to scoop it up. That's right. And then you're going to pass it off to a teammate, you're going to break down the floor, you're going to score a goal, Mark. Okay. All right. How long are you allowed to run with it? Is there traveling? I mean, are you allowed to just stand there and say, I've got the ball? <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's a lot like basketball where you have a shot clock, so you have 30 seconds to, okay. to get a shot, right? Uh, but there's no rules about double dribble, about anything like that. You can run the entire length of the floor as long as you're doing it within your own 30 seconds is basically, uh, is basically the rule. You know, you were talking about some of these guys having played for 13, 14 years now. I know some of them are only 17 years old, so they've been playing this since they were, they were babies. Yeah, we start at four years old, and even younger in some centers, they start at three. So by the time these guys are 17, 18, we still think of them as kids, but they've been playing their sport for 15, 14 years. You know, one of the exciting things is we get to introduce people to the world that is lacrosse here in Rogers TV because we get to televise some of the games for you. You know what, that's been a, a blessing for this team and for what we've built out here in Wilmot is just the exposure that 
that you guys have done for us on daytime as well as you know the broadcast on TV the last couple of seasons. This, we're getting four games this year on Rogers. We had four last year. I mean, people love to watch sports on TV. You know, and we're saturated with hockey. We're saturated with baseball. It's nice to see the newer sports, especially Canada summer sport, getting some more exposure on TV. You know, Susan made a great comment, and we both noticed the same thing. The goalies look huge, <laughs> and then it looks almost impossible to score on them, and yet you do get respectable scores. How's that possible? The gear looks massive. Well, the gear's massive, Mark, but it's so fast that the goalie's moving around, and it's, it's you know, these guys, they can put a ball in a hole, like a little bit bigger than the ball, just like basketball. The net's not much bigger than the ball. It's the control, and they can pick corners and bounce shots in, and, and it looks just, it looks easy, but it's not, so. Listen, I've already discovered it's not easy. <laughs> and it's not easy to throw, it's not easy to catch, it's gonna take a little bit of time. But you know what, it's been fun to be out here and, and try a little bit with the Wilmot Wild. You know what, we just love to have you guys around, and we're glad to see all the cameras and lights. The guys like it too, you know, at the junior C level, a lot of times they don't see, you know, a lot of the high exposure that they might have at the higher levels, the junior A's or the, the OHL type stuff. So for these guys, it's a thrill to have, you know, the cameras around and Rogers around and, and you know, just feel like the, there's something building out here. So we're all appreciative. What do we expect from the Wilmot Wild this season? Mark, I, I can't, I don't know what to tell you. I can make predictions, but then they never come true. So you know what, as long as we're competitive on and off the floor, right. that's what we've tried to build is not just a winning club, but a club that people just want to come watch because it's going to be exciting win or lose. So I, I think we're probably going to finish a little bit over 500 this year. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, hopefully a championship, but I'm not going to predict X and, uh, you know, knock on wood. Listen, I'm just saying a little more practice. I mean, Mark and I could sub in at any time if you need it through the season, Wayne. I saw Mark handling the ball earlier, and he's going to be a sniper on our power play in no time. So I only need a few days' notice, seriously, to just make sure my mom's okay with it. And for someone who's really entranced by it and wants to get involved with the sport, any suggestions on where to start? For someone young? Well, here in Kitchener, we have a great Kitchener minor lacrosse organization. And uh, like I said, they start as young as three or four years old. They have five to 600 kids every year playing. So uh, you know what, right here in their own backyard in, in Kitchener-Waterloo, uh, you know what, there's lots of uh, opportunity for kids to get started. All right, well let's get started. This time let's use a ball, okay? Let's practice oh, with the ball a little okay, bit more. Okay, that might be okay. more difficult. Okay. All right, yeah. and we're gonna be back with more daytime in a moment. Can we go? Okay, you hold this.